These days, Hollywood's the movie-making capital of the world. But had L.A. not lured filmmakers to go west, we might be hearing lights, camera, action right here. And Jacksonville could have been the filmmaking capital. We know what our modern-day Jacksonville skyline looks like. Well, let your mind wander a bit and travel back in time. In the early 1900s, there were TV production studios here in the River City. Back in the day, silent film stars would walk right down here by Main Street, and people would gather. I'm talking stars like Babe Hardy. You know him better as Oliver Hardy, part of the film duo Laurel and Hardy. He started his motion picture career right here in Jacksonville in 1914. Among the other silent film stars who made movies here, Rudolph Valentino and Lionel and Ethel Barrymore. It was mainly independent filmmakers who flocked to Jacksonville, according to film historians. They came here because of the climate, exotic locations, architecture, and rail access. Jacksonville became uh, really what was known as the winter film capital of the world. And this happened around 1908. Most of production back in 1908 was done up in the New York, New Jersey area. What was happening, though, in the wintertime, they were out of luck. It was cold. That created problems with the uh, cameras, the film stock. Somebody thought, uh, well, let's do some filming down there in terms of uh, being able to shoot year round. In 1920, Richard Norman was producing films. Norman, who was white, didn't like the way black actors were always portrayed in subservient roles. He wanted to change that. So when he moved here and established his studio, he produced a movie in 1926 called The Flying Ace. It employed an all African-American cast and was shown specifically to African-American audiences. He believed that people ought to be treated right and they ought to be portrayed correctly. And he thought that he could make something that would uh, portray them, portray African-Americans as they really were and not as you know, some racist saw them. The stereotypes. Exactly. The film was made at this site where Norman Studios is now being refurbished for history's sake. And the plane? It taxied through this area past what was then the wardrobe building off what is now a residential area on Arlington Avenue. The wardrobe cottage was where many of the people who came to be in Richard's movies would actually stay. Norman Studios made movies in Jacksonville for about a decade, but when the silent era ended, Never made the transition to talkies. So why did Jacksonville lose out on becoming Hollywood East? Seems the movie makers saw the people who lived here as being a bit too conservative. The motion picture people sort of wore out their welcome uh, because what they would do would be they'd do stunts where they'd call in a false fire alarm, set up a camera, cross from the fire station to get the racing engine out of the, out of the uh, garage. That didn't go over well. Plus, they would shoot, uh, they would go into areas of town uh, on Sunday when everybody else is in church, just so they have really the downtown area as their own set. People in Jacksonville, Sunday, you don't work on Sunday. So that didn't go over well. Consequently, filmmaking industry here dwindled. You had a mayor who took office who didn't take kindly to the movie makers. An influenza epidemic in 1918 didn't help, nor did World War I. Then there was Hollywood's glamour, all proved too much for Jacksonville. And while there's some filmmaking that still goes on in the area, Jacksonville never regained its former glory, nor became Hollywood East.